Avoidance just loves situationships. They'll act like they're a couple with you. Do intimate things, couple things, but they just won't put a label on the relationship. And every time you press for an official title, they'll give you excuses like, I'm just not ready for a relationship. Why can't we just go with the flow? Why do we have to complicate things? Why do we need a title? And it drags on and on and on. And this can go on for many months or even years where they refuse to put a label on the relationship. They refuse to officially commit. The reason why avoidance loves situationships, especially dismissive avoidance and fearful avoidance that lean dismissive, is due to a fear of commitment. But the fear of commitment is really a disguised fear of abandonment. This goes back to childhood. This is a person that was emotionally neglected by their parents or caretakers. They were not given the love and the nurturing in the way that they needed. So what they learned as a child is that if you rely on somebody for your emotional needs, this person is going to disappoint you. They're going to reject you. They're going to abandon you. So they learned that emotional closeness is unsafe. It leads to them getting rejected and abandoned. That's why they have these walls up. That's why they keep their partner at an emotional distance. Now with commitment, it is an implied notion that when you commit to somebody, you have to be emotionally available for them. You have to be willing to be vulnerable with them. It comes with the title. So they associate commitment with abandonment because of that emotional availability that is implied. So they prefer to keep it a situationship because it helps them feel safe. They don't have to be truly vulnerable in a situationship. They don't have to really open up. They can keep those walls up because they have an excuse to do so. It's not an official relationship. Now the caveat is an avoidant can easily commit to a partner that is toxic or emotionally unavailable because toxic partners are emotionally unavailable. That's an easy commitment because it doesn't trigger their fears. There's no threat of emotional intimacy with a toxic or emotionally unavailable partner. So they feel safe and they can commit to that person. But with an emotionally available partner that is consistent, loving, affectionate, that's scary because that means they'd have to be vulnerable too, which means they're going to get abandoned. Plus, it doesn't hurt as much to be abandoned by a toxic person or somebody that's not all that special, but it does hurt so much more to be abandoned by somebody who is special, somebody that is loving and consistent. So they fear commitment with a good partner. Now, the question for you is, why are you allowing the situation ship to continue? Where are your boundaries? Your boundaries are your limits of what you want, don't want, need, don't need, expect, don't expect, what you'll tolerate and not tolerate. If you're looking for a real relationship and they're stringing you along in a situation ship, you're mistreating yourself because you're allowing yourself to endure a treatment. You're allowing yourself to continue to be strung along in a way that you don't want or deserve. That pushes you further into anxious attachment. It makes you more insecure. Plus, you're giving them the full control over the relationship. You're tiptoeing around, walking on eggshells, avoiding triggering them so they don't run away. If you hold that boundary and say, no, I need a relationship. I'm not willing to just be strung along. This doesn't work for me. Chances are they are going to run away, but they were never going to meet your boundaries or your expectations or needs to begin with. And you're saving yourself time and emotional energy you are going to invest in somebody that is not investing it in you. Recognize your worth. If you don't want a situation ship, don't allow it because you're mistreating yourself. You're ultimately hurting yourself. And guess what? This relationship situation ship is still headed towards failure as long as the avoidant is emotionally unavailable. And by not committing, they're showing you they're not concerned about your wants or needs. They're not concerned about how you feel. They're only concerned about themselves and the validation that they get, which means they're not empathizing with you, which means they're not emotionally available. When they show you that they're not emotionally available, believe them. 